Behind me is hackberry, common hackberry. It's in the family Cannabaceae, which has switched. It used to be in the Almaceae family. So be careful if you're looking online at reference material. You might see some as Almaceae. Even the book we use in this class still refers to it as Almaceae, but it has been moved into the Cannabaceae family. Uh, we're going to take a closer look at the bark features, the leaf features, and if we can find some fruit, we'll look at that. Otherwise, I'll have a little image of what the fruit looks like. Some notable features about this tree. It is alternately arranged leaves, so the leaves alternate as they move up a twig. It has a bluish uh, brown little tiny fruit uh, that appears typically in August, September. Birds like it, although you can also eat it. It tastes a little bit to me like a fig kind of sweetness to it, although it's got a very small outer shell of the actual edible bit and the inside is a very hard, hard shell. And when you open that shell, there's an even smaller part, which is the seed, and it's a tiny little white, almost looks like a little golf ball that's inside that's the actual seed. It is alternately arranged leaves. The bark has a nice texture to it that makes this a fairly easy tree to identify. Let's take a closer look at a few of the features. So the hackberry bark starts out fairly smooth when it's younger, and then very quickly breaks into these kind of I've always described them as sort of warty protrusions. And if you look closely in here, you can start to see these little kind of ridges that form on the sides of the bark. So it gives it a fairly distinct look as we look at all of the bark. It's not these furrows or ridges that we might see. We just see these little protrusions coming out at sort of irregular forms. Typically a grayish in color, um, but that's fairly standard for a lot of bark. You might hear grayish brown or brownish gray. So really looking more closely at the bark. And if you can see into these inside ridges here, just a little bit of almost like a terracing effect that happens in the bark. You can see a little bit of that up here as well. Right in here. Here is a leaf. It is a single leaf and a simple leaf. So it is singly attached, and it's a simple leaf, so it only has one leaf blade, and it is alternately arranged. And here we can see that a little bit closer on the twig, where there's a leaf, then it goes up a little bit, and another leaf. If we look closely, we can start to see the bud right here, where my thumb is pointing, and a little bit up here. We can just start to see them forming in the later part of the year. Looking a little closer at just the leaf, you can see that there are ridges or teeth, we'd call that serrate, and it's a pretty nice green color. If you see this having a yellow color to it, it typically means that something is wrong on the site of the tree and the tree isn't getting enough nutrients. Here you can see a leaf on the underside with a lot, with many of these little protrusions and a lot more than than some other leaves that are on this particular tree, and that's from the hackberry nipple gall maker. Forms these little gall-like structures, which are actually the plant response to an insect. So inside here would be little insects, immature insects, living, little plant home made by the tree. On the top side, you might see a little bit of pock marks. This doesn't cause any significant damage to the tree. It's mostly an aesthetic issue. Can be useful in helping to identify. If we take some of the leaves off so we can look at just the buds and the way the twig has formed, here we can see the individual buds, very small, and we'd call those oppressed to the twig, meaning the top of it points in and it hugs the twig very, very tightly. So even from a distance, when all the leaves are off, this can make a distinct pattern in the tree. And notice how thin the twig is in relation to just my finger. Some of the trees that we'll look at have much thicker twigs, so be thinking about the thickness and thinness of, of tree twigs and the sizes of all the various aspects that we might encounter. If you look closely here, you can see the half of the shell of what would be left of the seed. It's got, it's very white, so see what I mean when it looks like a little golf ball. Now this is just half of it, the actual seed would have been inside that shell, so fairly small. And then covering this shell is an outer layer of the fleshy, sort of sweet tasting fruit, which birds will eat quite a bit, and you can too, although it's a lot of work to go through. 
we're looking around at just the way the leaves look in the canopy, you can see that there's a lot of leaves. It's very twiggy, fairly fine twigs. Even against the sky, you can see that it forms a fairly dense canopy. To give you a sense of the full size of the tree, it's fairly uh, good size, this particular tree. It has what we describe as an irregular crown. And we usually would think of this maybe as a medium to large size tree in urban environments.